In one big city, two poor children lived in the neighborhood Kai and Gerda, who loved each other like brother and sister. Parents allowed them to walk to each other on the roof to visit and sit on a bench under the roses. In the warm season, they spent all their time here, inventing different games, and in the winter they loved to sit by the warm hearth and listen to amazing stories that their grandmother often told them. Once, when the children were looking at a picture book, Kai felt something prick him in the eye and heart these were the fragments of the mirror of the powerful lady the Snow Queen. Since then, the boy's behavior has changed dramatically he became angry, rude and cruel. One day, Kai went to bargaining and never returned. When Gerda found out about Kai's disappearance, she cried for a long time. But she was sure that Kai was alive, so she decided to go in search of him. For a long time Gerda walked through the forests, through the fields, and then she came across a wonderful house, buried in flowers. The hostess came out to her it was an old, old sorceress in a large straw hat. The old woman really liked Gerda, and therefore she bewitched the poor girl and left her with her forever. Gerda forgot about the purpose of her journey and spent a lot of time playing in the wonderful garden of the hospitable hostess. Once she accidentally saw a rose and remembered Kai, and immediately waking up from the magic, went on the road. On the way, Gerda met a big smart raven. He told the girl that he knew a princess who was about to get married, and her fiancé looked very much like Kai. The raven agreed to take Gerda to him. Once in the palace, Gerda managed to see the future prince unfortunately, it was not Kai. The princess, having heard the sad story of the girl, presented her with a golden carriage with a coachman and servants, as well as shoes, a muff and a wonderful dress. And Gerda hit the road. In the dark forest, the sparkling carriage immediately caught the eye of the robbers, who immediately attacked it. The robber took Gerda prisoner. She took Gerda to the robber's castle to show off her menagerie, which contained forest pigeons and reindeer from Lapland. Hearing the story of her captive, the robber took pity on her and released her along with the reindeer in search of Kai. The reindeer brought the girl to the old Lapland woman, who warmed and fed the exhausted girl. She wrote a few words on a dried cod to her friend Finn, who lived near the Snow Queen's palace, asking to help the girl. She explained to Gerda that the reason for Kai's bad behavior was the fragments of the mirror that hit his heart and eyes, and he would never be the same if the ice was not melted by the power of a warm loving heart. Gerda went to the palace of the Snow Queen alone no one dared approach the house of the powerful mistress. She was very cold and scared. Finding herself in the castle, Gerda was surprised how cold, deserted and dead he was. Soon she noticed Kai, who turned completely blue, almost blackened from the cold. The boy sat in a corner and tried to lay out the word eternity from the ice flows, because in this case he would have received the whole world and a pair of new skates as a gift from the Snow Queen. Gerda rushed to Kai, hugged him tightly and cried. With her hot tears, she melted the splinter stuck in the boy's heart. Having picked up, Kai also began to cry, and the second shard flowed out of his eyes along with tears. How happy they were to see each other. But there was no time for joy. They had to get out of the ice palace before the Snow Queen returned. When Kai and Gerda finally got out of the kingdom of the Snow Queen, they hurried home. On the way back, they met all the friends who helped Gerda in her search. 
At home, their favorite blooming roses were waiting for them, and everything that happened was soon forgotten by them, like a heavy dream. In one small town there lived a toy maker, Geppetto. Hello! He made a living selling homemade wooden toys. He liked his work. The only thing the old master nice. regretted was that he had no children. One day, while walking in the woods, Geppetto saw an excellent log for new toys. He took the log with him and brought it to the workshop. <laughs> Immediately, without delay, the old man began to cut a toy out of him. But suddenly he heard a thin voice from the log. Geppetto thought what he imagined. He continued to carve the toy, and after a while he heard the voice again. Geppetto decided that he was simply getting too old and began to hear strange voices. Oh, no. The old man continued to work. First, he made the doll's head. Then arms and legs appeared. Geppetto finished the doll and sat her down in a chair. And he decided to clean up after himself. And at that moment he heard the voice again. Geppetto froze and looked around. But there was no one in the room except a wooden doll. The old man continued his work. And suddenly, the doll jumped up from the chair. Geppetto was speechless. When he realized that his doll came what? to life, he decided to give her a name. And he named him Pinocchio. Geppetto and Pinocchio lived merrily together. It's time to send your son to school. <laughs> Geppetto lived poorly and had no money for school supplies for Pinocchio. He decided to sell his jacket and gave the money to the boy. Pinocchio took the money and happily hurried to school. Suddenly, he saw a crowd of people. To find out what was happening, the boy squeezed forward and saw in front of him a huge colored tent. It was a circus. The clown stood in front of the entrance and barked visitors. Pinocchio Hello. became very interested in what was inside. But the clown would not let him in, because the boy did not no. have a ticket. Pinocchio took money out of his pocket and gave it to the clown. Going inside the tent, the boy saw how funny dolls were playing a performance on the stage. At the same time, the owner of the circus noticed Pinocchio. He was very happy to see a living doll and decided to take Pinocchio into his performance. As soon as the show was over, the owner of the circus caught the boy and put him in a cage. Pinocchio was very upset that he did not obey his father and did not go to school. He burst into tears. And suddenly, a fairy appeared in front of him. She saw that Pinocchio greatly regretted his deed and decided to save him. The fairy cast a spell and Pinocchio was on the street with money in his hands. He headed to school again. On the way, Pinocchio met a blind cat and a cunning fox. When they found out that the boy had money, the cat and the fox decided to take it. They said that this money is not enough for school supplies and it needs to be increased. And for this they need to plant money in a magic field. A money tree should grow from the earth, from which a generous monetary harvest could be reaped. The naive Pinocchio believed the scammers and gave his money. When the boy was left alone and without money, the fairy appeared in front of him again. Pinocchio lied to the fairy and said he had already bought school supplies. As soon as he said this, his nose began to grow. The more Pinocchio lied, the longer his nose became. He was very scared and told the fairy the whole truth. At the same instant, the boy's nose shrank to normal size. The fairy warned that every time Pinocchio cheated, his nose would enlarge. After these words, the boy again found himself on his way to school with money in his hands. Suddenly, the owner of the circus blocked the road to Pinocchio. He was terribly angry that the boy was able to escape and wanted to put him back in the cage. But Pinocchio was not easy to catch. Without hesitation, he jumped into the water. Pinocchio was made of wood, so he didn't drown. And the current carried the boy forward. When he was already swimming to the shore, a giant fish swallowed him. At the same time, desperate to look for his son on land, old man Geppetto decided to start searching on the water. He borrowed a small boat from a fisherman friend and swam to look. Suddenly a violent storm began. 
The boat could not cope with the waves and crashed. The old man could not swim and therefore began to drown. And then, a huge fish that swallowed Pinocchio swallowed Zeppetto. When he got inside, he immediately saw his son. Seeing his father, Pinocchio was very happy. He was very sorry that he had not obeyed and promised from that moment to always do as his father told him. Seeing that Pinocchio was truly sorry, the fairy decided to save them. She freed the boy and the old man from the belly of the fish and carried them to the shore. <laughs> Pinocchio became a very intelligent and obedient boy. He went to school every day and after studying he helped his father in the workshop.